The movie opens in Berlin, Germany, at some point in the Second World War. The fur Hitler is working with Keppel, a behavior coach. Hitler says he doesn't agree with the way people are greeting Keppel. Even though the Nazi salute is archaic, he bemoans the fact that people should at least raise their hands to the wrist in a respectful manner. Then he tells the story of how he has tried every humanly conceivable thing to destroy the enemy's foundations after they have desecrated their soil. The fact that German is here as well worries him since he finds it inexplicable. He awakens someplace in a jungle on the ground in the scene that follows. He he notices the enemy aircraft are nowhere to be found while staring up at the sky, leading him to surmise that they may have gone to sleep. Unexpectedly, a ball bounces in his direction and stops right next to him. He straightens up and moves past the bush toward a structure. Three small children then come up to him and ask whether he's okay. Hitler believes that they hold the key to the country's future as he observes them. Then he asks them where the street is. At that moment Fabian Saatsky, a reporter, is using his camera to record the children. On the far side of the screen is Hitler. Reaching for his army headgear, he tells himself it's time to head to the Führer bunker. When Hitler arrives on the street, he is astounded to see people riding single wheel bikes. He discovers that individuals are taking pictures of him and says that even though the rubble has disappeared, people have gone insane. Then, he doubts whether he went into a coma and missed the triumph as he feels a contempt temporary car by his side. He becomes conscious of the fact that he does not fully understand his circumstances and sets an alarm to learn more. Then, when he asks a man where Chancellery is, the man asks him to take a picture instead. As people approach him to take turns taking pictures, he becomes agitated by the flashes from the camera. He concludes that something went wrong at the establishment after becoming perplexed by the strange happenings around him. Hitler hears a woman talking on her phone in German as he is leaving. When he approaches her and asks about the current date, she becomes frightened and splatters his eyes. Hitler sobs in agony as his vision becomes hazy and his eyes turn crimson. After stumbling, he moves to a local newspaper shop on foot. He instantly collapses to the ground after being alarmed at seeing October 3, 2014, written on the paper. Mr. Christophson Senbrink is commended by Kerner, the head of a TV station, for his outstanding work as the deputy's head somewhere else. Although he suggests a better course of action, he instead names Miss Katja Bellini as the managing director. Christoph is astonished and unsatisfied as a result. He visits his office to let his frustrations out on Fabian, a fledgling filmmaker. Maker. Fabian tries to persuade his supervisor, but in the end, he is fired and escorted out by security. Hitler asks the proprietor of the newsstand about the date when he awakens a while later. He attests that the year is, in fact, 2014. A bewildered Hitler wonders whether the merchant has abducted him and wonders if the enemy's secret service is pulling a practical joke on him. The shopkeeper gives him a chocolate bar in response to his threat to murder him if he is working for the enemy. After much effort, Hitler unlocks it and takes a sniff. Declaring it to be industrially pressed grain, he asks the storekeeper if bread is still in limited supply. Mistaking Hitler for an actor, the shop shopkeeper asks him whether they are filming a documentary nearby. Hitler responds that he is the fur when the shopkeeper remarks that he looks exactly like the fur. Hitler then inquires about the shopkeeper's possession of Sturmer or Panzerber after noticing the Turkish newspaper. The store owner claims that he serves more Turkish clients. Hitler is shocked to learn that there are Turks living in Berlin. After that, he begins gathering data from the newspaper. As he reads it, he believes that he lost the last war and that awkward ladies with the charm of a wet noodle had taken control of Germany. He goes on to bemoan Poland's continued existence and declares the war to have been a complete waste. Fabian, in the meantime, tears up when he watches his soccer-related video report and realizes he got dismissed. After calming him down, his mother urges him to pause the film and points out Hitler shadow. The discovery of a person who resembles Hitler so much makes Fabian laugh. Hitler is asked to set aside the newspaper and stand outside by the shopkeeper when they return to the establishment. Hitler is resentful at being made to work. The storekeeper advises Hitler to wash his clothing because they are stench-filled. He then proceeds to a laundromat and requests that his uniform be cleaned. Hitler, unable to go in his undies, inquires as to whether they have another uniform. Hitler is next seen wearing a sweatshirt and jeans as he makes his way to the news vendor. But Fabian is waiting for him at the store after managing to locate him in some way. He is astounded by Hitler's appearance after catching a glimpse of him. As Fabian marches through contemporary Germany, he begs Hitler if he can be filmed. Hitler is in favor of the concept. After receiving some money in a car from his mother, Fabian sets out on a journey with Hitler. Hitler finds the television amusing when the two end up in a motel. Afterwards, he chooses to discuss politics in Fabian's presentation. He visits various locations and inquires about people's political opinions. Following the interviews, he discovers that the people's exposure to democracy was low while he was 
was away. He observes people's hidden fury and discontent, which makes him think of the 1930s when people had similar opinions but didn't have a phrase for it. Political disenchantment. Hitler is informed about the issue of immigration in the nation, which leads him to promote the notion that racial mixing is ineffective. Later, Fabian queries Hitler about the origin of his distinctive mustache. In response, Hitler says he chopped off his mustache to make room for a gas mask. Hitler is bitten by a dog at a farm where the two eventually end up. He fires at the animal out of wrath. Fabian grabs the gun and reprimands him. Eventually, as the tour continues, Fabian runs out of money. However, he devises a scheme and persuades the passers to have Hitler draw their sketches. People find Hitler's sarcastic drawings humorous and pay him for them. When they have enough money, they proceed with their journey. When they get back to town, Christoph sees a film of Hitler from Fabian. Since Fabian posted the video online, it has received a lot of views. Christoph finds the video's high amount of views impressive. He approaches Fabian to get Hitler's name and phone number. Following their conversation, Christoph requests Fabian to remove Hitler from the office because he believes the man to be insane. Hitler stops by the director's office before departing, asking her to help him preserve Germany. Bellini questions him about the scheme, intrigued by the concept. She promptly requests that her aide put together a suitable TV format so that the fur can be brought Broadcasted hearing Hitler's proposal. Then, Fabian threatens to remove Hitler if Christoph doesn't return him to his job. Upon learning this, Christoph assigns him to the kitchen. While pledging to elevate into an editorial position once one becomes available, Hitler receives a table in the TV studio after a while. Christoph asks Kromeyer to assist Hitler in using the computer. Hitler says he remembers the era of computers and thinks them one of the greatest inventions ever. Hitler tries to register for mail service, but Kromeyer tells him that his name is already taken. Hitler encourages her to use New Reich's chancellery because he likes it and sulks at others who are using his name without permission. Hitler will appear in a live comedy show called Whoa Dude. According to Christoph, he still harbors resentment for Bellini for beating him to a promotion, and he plans to cause her problems. With mocking remarks about Jews, he hopes to introduce racism into the discussion and remove Hitler. As soon as the program begins, host Witzigman asks Hitler to come on stage. The hall falls silent as Hitler looks around, despite the audience chatting among themselves about his appearance. Hitler breaks the quiet immediately, but he doesn't read the lines exactly as they are written. He clarifies that although he is supposed to make a joke about immigrants, he won't. He claims that although television is a fantastic human innovation, the shows that are shown on are absurd. He clarifies issues such as unemployment and poverty and predicts that the nation's citizens are blindly falling into an abyss. Hitler declares that he would battle the TV until he defeats them, not only when the abyss is aired. Everyone applauds him and says they like the idea. When the host Witzigman notices Hitler's popularity, he becomes jealous. Bellini requests that Christoph broadcast Hitler in each performance. Christoph is upset because his idea did not work out. In the scenario that follows, Hitler appears on multiple TV shows and states that his goal is to restore Germany to its former glory. As he meets more people and party officials, his popularity soars. He begins by enticing them all with his ideas. Hitler and Fabian pay a visit to the NPD headquarters in Berlin one day. He makes a call to Ulfburn the NPD's federal chairman, and inquires about the progress made by his cause. Hitler disparages him, claiming that they have wasted too much time, and the movement is shocked by what they say. Decades later, when the police and the district attorney, DA, show up at the TV studio, Christoph is thrilled and excited. They clarify that the reason for their visit is to investigate a possible hate legislation offense. Bellini queries what they should do next. Christoph quickly suggests that they might have to postpone the fur event. According to the DA, the transmission can continue. Bellini exhales with relief, while Christoph pretends to to smile. Following the DA's departure, Kromeyer gives Christoph a note outlining the payment for the dog that Hitler had shot earlier in the trip. Happy to get the letter, Christoph thinks it might be a means of stirring up trouble. Hitler is then subjected to direct questions regarding his various activities during the war on a TV broadcast. In response, Hitler says he wants to help people, but the interviewer reminds him that none of his actions are acceptable. He plays the video of him shooting the dog for him. The crowd is disturbed by the footage. Furious, Hitler swears he would exact the same revenge on him. He goes on to say that he will convert their studio into a tank parking lot. When Christoph sees people's unfavorable reactions, he becomes happier. Following the appalling interview Christoph is named the new manager and Bellini is sacked. Hitler then moves in with Fabian at his home and begins living with him. He laughs at the route that fate has chosen and begins work on his second novel. The book is released shortly. Three months later, the company's significant loss is reviewed in a meeting held in the TV studio with all attendees. Christoph thinks Witzigman's show will help them get back on track, but he gets word from one of the staff members that he has resigned. Christoph becomes agitated and furious with several staff members for the poor performance. Christoph is intrigued by a staff member's suggestion to bring Hitler back. He goes looking for Hitler once more and makes an offer to Fabian. If they allow them to screen the film on their TV, he will invest a million dollars in the movie that Hitler and Fabian are making. When Hitler and Fabian arrive to Kromeyer's home, 
Hitler is recognized by Kromayer's grandmother. She says that Hitler killed everyone by gassing them. She yells for him to go and refers to him as a criminal. Hitler admits in the automobile that he is shocked to learn that Kromayer is a Jew. He begins demeaning Jews by referring to them as less human. Fabian is let down by Hitler's deeds and remarks. Fabian gets Hitler to reenact how he arrived at the location once they are back on stage. Hitler is asked what transpired prior to the ball rolling toward him in the woods, but he is unable to recall it. He exits the scene later that evening and is accosted by some goons. They give him a severe hit to the face and declare him the reason for regaining Germany. Hitler awakens to find himself in front of Bellini in a hospital. Simultaneously, Fabian reviews the video he recorded concerning the guys in soccer. Upon close inspection, he discovers that Hitler has stood up from his lying position. Fabian is astounded by what came before it. When he gets there, he sees a board that indicates the historical location of the fur bunker. Hitler is nowhere to be seen when Fabian dashes to the hospital. Bellini claims he is on his way to the filming location. When Fabian claims to be the genuine Adolf Hitler, Bellini does not accept this. Fabian becomes crazy and gives a frantic explanation of his theory. He escapes as the guards attempt to apprehend him. When Fabian arrives at the set, he points a gun at Hitler. Regarding his identity, Hitler clarifies that he never professed to be someone else. Hitler responds to Fabian's accusation that he is deceiving people with his propaganda by saying that in 1933, the people chose a leader who publicly communicated his entire philosophy. Using his revolver, Fabian leads Hitler to the top of a skyscraper. He declares Hitler to be a monster after cornering him. Hitler responds by clapping back, claiming that common people chose an outstanding man and gave him control over the destiny of the nation. He clarifies that the reason people choose him is that they have the same core beliefs. Hitler is shot by an infuriated Fabian, sending him flying off the building and into the street. Fabian soon hears Hitler's voice, declaring that no German will be able to get rid of him, and directly behind it, Hitler, who was just knocked down, reappears. At that moment Bellina requests a cut in the studio and everyone applauds the shooting. It turns out that the actor playing Fabian was only an extra on a movie set. Hitler then requests that everyone think of their other comrades who were unable to join them. Kromeyer is crying someplace else as she watches Fabian through a hole in the mental health unit. Following the film's success, Hitler and Bellina are occupied signing autographs and doing interviews. The folks on the street greet Hitler respectfully and appear to like him as they drive past a car. 